Item number, SCP-114. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-114 is kept in a 10-meter cubed standard concrete humanoid containment cell at Site-17. The cell is positioned at the bottom of a 40-meter shaft to prevent staff members from coming into the proximity of SCP-114. The cell is accessible by a staircase restricted to emergency use only. Daily rations are provided to SCP-114 three times a day by means of a dumbwaiter. SCP-114 is also permitted to submit written requests to attending staff by the same means. To date, SCP-114 has been granted one Quran, Arabic, one prayer rug, and one blank journal with pens. Research on SCP-114 is suspended until further notice. Elimination of SCP-114 is acceptable in the event of a multiple containment breach crisis. Description SCP-114 is a Pashtun woman of Afghani origin, approximately 40 years old and 160 centimeters tall. SCP-114 has the involuntary effect of fostering and escalating violent conflict between all individuals in her proximity. Subjects within 10 to 15 meters of SCP-114 become inconsolably aggressive at trivialities or points of little consequence, often to the degree of projecting hostile motives on others. Arguments generally arise between individuals after one to three minutes of exposure to SCP-114. The resulting arguments turn to violence in all cases. Notably, persons affected by the presence of SCP-114 will never exhibit hostility towards SCP-114 or attempt to inflict harm upon her. Subjects ordered to deliberately injure SCP-114 find themselves unable to do so. Communication with SCP-114 has only been possible through written notes or electronic means. Researchers have gleaned that SCP-114 is unaware of her effect on other people. She shows little to no response to exposure to violence, and seems to be under the impression that human beings are naturally aggressively hostile to each other. SCP-114 is consistently unresponsive and uncooperative with researchers, and appears to be acutely wary of human interaction. Due to the difficulty of communication with SCP-114, psychological evaluations have been speculative at best. Rudimentary assessments strongly suggest psychological trauma. Combat stress reaction and or compassion fatigue have been tentatively proposed. Experiment Log 114-A SCP-114 was placed in a test room with distancing protocols similar to her containment cell. Attending researchers observed through remote electronic means. Experiment 114-A-1 Procedure Subjects D-1269 and D-8543 were placed in the test room with SCP-114. No instructions were given. Results Subjects did not attempt to interact with SCP-114. After 75 seconds of exposure, D-8543 verbally requested a cigarette from D-1269. D-1269 responded with negative. D-8543 proceeded to shove D-1269 against the wall of the test room. Subjects began fighting, with apparent intent to kill. Subjects ignored verbal entreaties to cease. Subjects terminated. Throughout the experiment, SCP-114 watched the proceedings, but was visibly unmoved. Experiment 114-A-2 Procedure Subjects D-5410 and D-5699 were placed in the test room with SCP-114. A plastic screen was placed across the length of the test room so that subjects were unaware of the presence of SCP-114. Results Comparable to Experiment 114-A-1 Subjects terminated. Experiment 114-A-3 Procedure Subject D-1002 was given a carving knife Stainless steel, 15 centimeters. Subject was placed in the test room with SCP-114, with orders to kill her. Results D-1002 immediately rushed at SCP-114. SCP-114 recoiled, screaming. D-1002 stopped abruptly at approximately half a meter from SCP-114, and dropped the knife. D-1002 stood still for four minutes, growing visibly agitated. At five minutes, D-1002 began yelling incomprehensibly and moving around the room in an unnatural ape-like fashion. After eight minutes, 
D-1002 began banging on the walls with his head and fists. Subject was rendered unconscious. Subject terminated. Experiment 114A-4 Procedure Subject D-4343 was placed in the test room of SCP-114, with orders to remain still. After four minutes, subject was forcibly removed from the room by robotic means. Results Subject showed signs of aggression and agitation comparable to Experiment 114A-3. Heart rate was recorded at 210 BPM. Blood tests revealed levels of cortisol and adrenaline impossible without the application of drugs. Subject returned to a normal physical and mental state after approximately 15 hours. Experiment 114A-5 Procedure Subject D-7258, a native Afghan, was administered a dilute mixture of mild sedatives, antidepressants, tetrahydrocannabinol, alpha blockers, and beta blockers intravenously. Subject was placed in the test room with SCP-114 and ordered to attempt normal conversation. Results D-7258 addressed SCP-114. SCP-114 maintained eye contact with D-7258, but did not respond. After 45 seconds, D-7258 began shivering and shouting. At one and a half minutes after exposure, D-7258 fell to the floor in convulsions. Subject expired after three minutes. Autopsy of the cadaver revealed a massive cerebral hemorrhage. Document 114-A-898-12 Abridged eyewitness report by a former soldier in the 40th Red Army, interviewed March 23, 1991. Translated and transcribed. We took on February the 1st, 1980. It was a shit little village, but the Mujahideen put up a damn good fight. Eight of our men killed, 15 wounded. One tank destroyed. It was dead cold, too. You think the Middle East is warm, but you go to the mountains in February. It is not so. Anyway, we were mopping up the area, going through the huts, looking for weapon caches and the like. It seemed like every doorstep had some old babushka weeping and tearing at her hair and clutching our knees. But at the end of the street was this one big hut, no babushka outside. Only there were trays of food left out, like an offering before the door. Pauses for several seconds. So six of us go in to search. It was big and empty inside, dusty and practically bare. Didn't look like anyone had been there in a long time. But soon, we hear this soft whimpering though. And look, over in the corner, there's a little girl, must be eight or nine, curled up and all alone. Piotr, he was a big softy. He goes over, he bends down, puts out his hands, says, come on, little one, it is okay, we won't hurt you. But the girl won't budge. Then Piotr stands up, all stiffly, and looks back at us funny. Konstantin walks over and puts a hand on his shoulder, tells him to leave the girl alone, laughing good-naturedly. Piotr gets all red-faced, like he's had a full bottle, and shouts, get your damn hand off my shoulder, or something of the sort. He looks like a wild animal. We are all in surprise. And suddenly, they're on the ground, and he's bashing Konstantin's face in with the butt of his rifle, screaming. It took three of us to pull him off, and by then, Konstantin was dead. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, Go watch SCP-113, The Gender Switcher, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.